Howdy! In this video, we are going to talk about why we use electrons in TEM, as well as the resolution of TEM. There are many advantages of using electrons to form images. First of all, electrons have very short wavelengths. In a 120 keV TEM, the relativistic wavelength of the electron beam is 0.00335 nanometers. At a higher acceleration voltage, at 300 keV, the relativistic wavelength is further reduced to 0.00197 nanometers. Just to give you a reference, the typical wavelength for visible light is around 400 nanometers. So the wavelength of the electron beam is orders of magnitude smaller than the wavelength of visible light. The second advantage of using electron beam to form images is that electrons are charged particles. The electrons are negatively charged, so it's easy to focus electron beam using electromagnetic lenses. A good counterexample is X-ray. X-ray can also have very small wavelengths, but they are very difficult to focus. The third advantage is that there is a large amount of information can be generated from the electron beam material interaction, which will be a focus of this class. From the image on the right, you can see that when the electron beam goes through the specimen, you can get elastically scattered electrons, which will give you the diffraction information. You can also get the inelastically scattered electrons. The loss of energy will be transferred to the characteristic X-ray, which will provide the chemical information. Like all coins have two sides, by using electrons we also face some challenges. The first issue is that TEM requires very good vacuum. This is because the presence of air molecules in the column can scatter electrons. If we use X-ray again for the comparison, X-ray does not require vacuum. The second issue is that the electron material interaction can cause damage to your sample. I will share one example with you from the textbook in a couple slides. After talking about why using electrons in TEM, let's talk about the resolution of TEM. The definition for resolution, regardless the microscope you use, is defined as the smallest distance between two points that can be resolved. Therefore, the unit for resolution is distance, such as millimeters, microns, or nanometers. The resolution of the human eyes usually is 0.1 to 0.2 millimeters. The resolution for a regular optical microscope is about 200 nanometers. The resolution of TEM can be down to sub nanometers easily. Here, I'd like to elaborate a little bit on what happens when we focus the beam to the smallest spot. When you converge or focus the beam to the smallest spot, you actually do not get a spot. Instead, you get a disk. The name for the disk is called the airy disk. The reason we do not get a single point or spot is because we cannot converge the beam to a smaller size than its own wavelength. You can also see the concentric rings around the airy disk, and the distribution is described by the point spread function. Therefore, to be more accurate, Resolution should be defined as the smallest distance between two airy disks instead of two points that we can resolve. In the example here, it's more difficult to resolve the two airy disks on the left, but much easier to resolve the two airy disks on the right. Taking a step forward, how can we quantify resolution? There are many criteria we can use. Here, we'll focus on the Rayleigh criterion. According to the Rayleigh criterion, delta is equal to 0.61 lambda divided by mu sine beta. Looking at the parameters one by one, delta is the resolution, uh, which is the smallest distance can be resolved. Lambda is the wavelength. Lambda is the wavelength for the beam we use to form images. The wavelength of electron beam in TEM is much, much less than visible light. And this gives the superior resolving power of TEM compared to optical microscope. Mu is the refractive index. Beta is the semi-angle of collection. 
mu sine beta as a whole is also called the numerical aperture. Just a couple more words on the angles alpha and the beta. They will appear again and again in the future videos. Alpha is called the convergence semi-angle. You can tune that by converging or spreading out the beam. Beta is called the collection semi-angle, and the value of beta is determined by the size of the aperture. Note that the Rayleigh criterion is not the only criterion you can use. There are other criterion you may consider when calculating the resolution. A very, very important point to make is that you can never achieve the theoretical diffraction limit of electron beam. This is due to the imperfection of lenses. Spherical aberration and chromatic aberration are examples of lens imperfections. Whenever you're using TEM, you need to keep a few things in mind. The first thing is that when using TEM, you can only reveal a small field of view. You have to ask yourself how representative is your observation. My recommendation is never use TEM as the first tool to characterize your specimen. Always use XRD or optical microscope or SEM to look at your specimen first. The second thing to bear in mind is that in TEM, you're looking at the 2D projections of 3D objects. A classical example is the two-headed rhino you see in the figure on the left. The third thing to bear in mind is that you're dumping very high energy electron beam into your material. Your material can get damaged. As shown in the figure on the right, the damage can accumulate as you increase the exposure time of your specimen under the electron beam. To wrap up today's video, I will use one slide to summarize some common and uncommon TEMs. If you have a microscopy center in your institute, most likely you'll have either the FEI TEM or the GEO TEM or both. If you have hardcore microscopists in your institute, then there is a possibility you may have the neon stem. Cornell University, Rutgers University, and Oak Ridge has the neon stem. The last figure shows an example of a HVEM. The operation voltage is much higher than the regular TEM. It is used to study fairly thick materials as well as to emulate the radiation damage in materials. You don't see this type of TEM very often anymore. In the next video, we'll start talking about the electron beam material interaction, which is the foundation for diffraction, imaging, and spectroscopy.